What's going on guys, it's Simo. So today I'm bringing to you a set review of the brand new 2019 Megatins. Now these Megatins are gonna be released in just a few days at the time of recording this video, but just like with every product, I like to give you guys my overall analysis of it to help guide you guys and give you some information as to whether or not you may wanna purchase it for yourself and give you guys my own recommendations, of course. But before we get into it, if you guys are gonna be in the Orlando area on September 7th and 8th, come on down to the Pro Play Games Tour event. It's a $20 entry fee, 2000 dollar prize pool is up for grabs and if you get your invite by making top cut you'll be invited to the ten thousand dollar prize pool invitational in january i'll be there doing live stream commentary and it's going to be a good time links are down in the description if you want to pre-register but getting back to these megatons you know these megatons actually have a lot of really good value because they're doing something with these that they've never done before while they do include cards from sets like flames of destruction cybernetic horizon soul fusion as well as dark saviors which is something we have haven't seen before. They also are modifying the rarities and giving us cards in different rarities that we haven't seen before, giving it more of a collector's appeal. You know, when I talk about reviewing products, I like to review them based on my three pillars for the collector's market, the casual market, and the competitive market. And I personally feel if you can make a product that appeals to all three of those pillars, then it's going to be a very successful product. And we're going to go ahead and see if the gold sarcophagus mega tin meets those expectations. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get Get right into it. So I wanted to start off with what is in a 2019 gold sarcophagus megaton. So each tin contains three packs, which are mega packs. Now there's 16 cards in each of these packs. That means you're gonna get 48 cards total. Each pack contains one prismatic secret rare, one ultra rare, one super rare, one rare, and 12 commons. Now, like I said, these are gonna contain cards from Flames of Destruction, Cybernetic Horizon, Soul Fusion, as well as Dark Saviors. This is something we haven't seen before where they've reprinted cards from a side set in a mega tin like this, usually it's the last four core sets. So that's interesting, especially considering Sky Striker is also one of the best decks. In addition to that, there's gonna be five Prismatic Secret Rare card variants. You're gonna get two of six brand new cards with art by Kazuki Takahashi, which I'll go ahead and show those right here after uh, I go through the rest of this. Two of five cards from the original Yu-Gi-Oh! animated series, and one of three new world premiere cards. So we're just gonna dive right in now. So first off, like I said, you're gonna get two of six brand new cards with art by Kazuki Takahashi. Here's the Blue Eyes Alternative Ultimate Dragon. This artwork looks absolutely phenomenal. I mean, there's really nothing Nothing else left to say there. Here is the Magician of Black Chaos Max. The Exodia, the Legendary Defender, which again, I just love the artwork on these cards. So much nostalgia, but at the same time, it just, this embodies Yu-Gi-Oh to me, you know? Then you have Palladium Oracle Mana. You have the Red Eyes Alternative Black Dragon, the counterpart to the Blue Eyes Alternative White Dragon, so that's pretty cool. And then we have the Neo Kaiser Glider. So remember, you're gonna get two out of six of these promos per tin. Then you're gonna get two out of the five of these following cards of Obelisk the Tormentor, Slifer the Sky Dragon, Wing Dragon of Raw, Raigeki, and Monster Reborn. Now that's pretty nice. Monster Reborn's been printed to death, but is actually pretty nice because while it isn't exactly a competitive staple, it's just nice to have more copies of Raigeki lying around because it's only been reprinted a few times and honestly, it's a very strong card. So it's something you really just wanna have. And going based off of just the promos alone, you know, these are very, very collector and casual oriented cards. I mean, the fact that you can get alternate arts of all these other cards, but also the fact that, you know, they have nostalgia from the anime and all these different things, it's really, really appealing in that regard. Then you're gonna get one of three of these brand new cards that are not TCG exclusive because the OCG is actually getting them about at the same time as we are. And these cards are going to have significant impact on our competitive format. I did an entire video discussing a few of them. One of them being Dimension Shifter, pretty much like a macro cosmos and a hand trap. It's kind of ridiculous. Then we have Nibiru, the primal being, just gonna to completely body combo decks for the foreseeable future. And then Dark Ruler No More, which pretty much shuts off all monster effect negation heavy decks, which is basically every combo deck in the game. So going based solely off of these, you know, starting promos, while you're only getting one of three of them, that's still pretty good. And the thing is, these are gonna be accessible to a wide audience. And yeah, obviously, you know, you wanna get multiple play sets of especially the competitive oriented cards. It might be a little bit difficult because that means if you wanted play sets of each, you'd have to have a minimum of nine tins just to get them. And that's not counting if you get any duplicates. So again, this is why it's always, I always say to just get the single cards because obviously you don't wanna play that gambling game. But, you know, you're still getting a lot of value here because just with the promo cards alone, you're already appealing to each of the three pillars before we even get to the reprints of the cards themselves. 
Now, speaking of which, we're going to go through a ton of different cards here that are going to be in the tins. I'm going to be discussing them by rarity. So we're going to start off with the ultra rares. Now, in my opinion, the ultra rares is actually where there's a significant amount of value here because not only did they bump a lot of cards that were in these sets to ultra rare that honestly probably deserve it. They also took down some of the rarities of the secret rares to make them more accessible. So not only from a competitive or a collector standpoint or even casual, if you want to rarity bump some of your cards in your decks, but they also took some of the more expensive of secret rares and made them more affordable by putting them in the ultra rare slot in these tins as well. And I think that's great overall because honestly, if you open up one of these tins, everybody wins. So take right here, Nightmare Corruptor Iboli, formerly a secret, now an ultra. Trisbania, formerly a secret, now an ultra. Cerberus was a super, and now you're going to be able to get it as an ultra. So this is a rarity bump. This is nice because every uh, Orcus deck is playing this, or a lot of decks are playing just because it's a good generic link. Same thing goes for Phoenix. Nice rarity bump there. Unicorn, a very, very expensive card, now being bumped down to ultra, being much more accessible. Griffin, not played as much, but it's nice that it's easier to get your hands on it. Vampire Sucker, very specific to zombie decks, but still one of those cards that could fluctuate in price every once in a while, bump down to Ultra. Crusadia Reclusia, this was a common, and now it's going to be an Ultra, but that's amazing because all the Crusadia decks, even Salomon Great decks have been playing this, so this is cool for anyone who plays those variants who wants to rarity bump their common Reclusias up into Ultra. Boral Sword Dragon, one of the most impactful Link forwards of the game, being a secret rare, yes, it's just been reprinted already, but now there's going to be more copies floating around, help bring the price point of this card down even more to get it in the hands of the players because this is basically a staple rank four in every extra deck because it's a win condition on its own. Reprodocus, this was originally a common or rare, I think. It got up to the super, I think, in an OTS pack, and now it's going to be ultra. It doesn't seem too much play now that Summon Sorceress is banned, but it's still pretty cool to see a card like this getting some love. Danger Bigfoot, down to ultra rare. We have Danger Nessie going down to Ultra Rare as well. Pankratops just got reprinted as a Secret Rare, but now you're going to be able to get Ultra Rare copies if you prefer something a little bit different than Secret. Dragon Duo, very impactful Thunder Dragon card being bumped up to Ultra. I think that's very fitting. Thunder Dragon Titan and Colossus, both at Secret Rare originally, now being bumped down to Ultra, making Thunder decks that much more affordable for any of you guys looking to play it. Herald of the Abyss, not a card that saw a lot of play. It saw some fringe side deck play, but very interesting piece of removal, and if you're looking for it for your side deck or if you are a fan of this card now you can get it at a slightly higher rarity trap trick one of the most expensive cards in the game currently just because of the fact that it only had like a single printing and the decks that use it really need it and the fact that you'll be able to get it at ultra rare means the price is going to come down significantly thunderbird going to ultra dogman going to ultra suchi noko going to ultra suchi noko was like 30 to 40 bucks not too long ago and now it's going to be much more affordable in that ultra rare slot vampire freyland's another one that's only again for zombie for the most part. Then you got stuff like Beat, uh, Bladesman for Hire. Mobilize Engage at Ultra 2. I know this just got reprinted as a secret, but again, more copies of Engage going around if you guys are playing Sky Striker, Orcus, whatever deck to take advantage of these uh, Sky Striker cards, it's going to be that much more easy to acquire. Widow Anchor, same thing for that, although it's pretty much relegated solely to Sky Striker. It's much easier to acquire at that price. And that's it for the Ultras. I mean, I just named some of the most competitive cards of the past six months, and they're going to all be be in this tin. Now, granted, you only get three of those per tin, but again, it brings down the price of a lot of these, or you can rarity bump a lot of the cards that you're interested in that were at a common rare or super rare level to help, you know, foil out your deck. So again, it's just something for everyone. I want to quickly touch on some super rares here. Dawn Dragster is really nice going from rare to super. It's cool that they even gave love to the rare and super rare slot in these tins, although it's few and far between on most of the cards, but Dawn Dragster going to super, very good for your Pendulum decks. You've got Crusadia Arborea going to super, again, for your Crusadia Thunder decks. Same thing with Draco. Draco, very pivotal in the Guard Dragon engine, so it's really nice to see that going to super. Cyber Dragon Herzi even was an ultra. Now that's going to go down to super, making Cyber Dragon players have a little bit more accessibility to that card because I know it was getting pretty expensive. Rev System, same thing with that. Thunder Dragon Fusion, originally an Ultra, now a Super. Uh, Afterburners, not the most expensive card, but it's cool to see it as a Super in here as well. And I said that they gave the Rare slot some love. Space Insulator, formerly a Common, now it's going to be a Rare. It's not like the biggest rarity bump, but this is a very good generic Link 2 that decks have been playing for quite some time. You've got Celestial Observatory. This card has only been printed as a secret in Cybernetic Horizon, and it's going to be a Rare in these Mega 
Titans. That's crazy to me. I mean, this card isn't like the most you know prominent by any means, but if there's ever a level six deck that comes out in the future, Celestial Observatory is going to be for you. I'm looking at you, Herald players. And then I wanted to wrap things up, of course, with the secret rares. Now, what's cool is we are getting prismatic secret rare foiling on these, which is something that you might see like in Galaxy Soldier, if you guys know the foiling on there. It's a very old retro style of foiling. Japan actually, I think, uses it more prominently than we do. So I want to discuss those as well. So Altergeist Multifaker, definitely something that uh, is very, very important here. Uh, Multifaker, you know, essentially, Altergeist are still a good deck. We've seen them top multiple events in the past few weeks, and Multifaker is going to continue to see play. So now you have only one Multifaker, but at least now it can be Prismatic Seeker Rare. We have Iron Dragon Teamaton, not the most used card. I mean, it does see side deck play every once in a while, but it's nice to see it get a little bit of a rarity bump. Nightmare Mermaid, essential for all your Orcus decks, and now it's gonna go from rare to secret rare. So that's gonna be a nice pickup for anyone there. World Legacy Secession, this card is just incredible. I mean, it's used in all the link decks you can search it like going from ultra to secret really really nice there Sekka's light this card deserves to be secret rare this card is just incredible for all the monster heavy decks like thunder burning abyss things like that called by the grave this is going to have such high demand as being a staple three of in almost every single deck this card is going to fetch a high high price this is going to be a big pull if you get it in your secret rare slot Red Reboot, very, very solid side deck card going from super to secret. Incredible pick for secret rare in the uh, tins. Crusadia Maximus, not the most used Crusadia, but it's still nice to see that it will have a secret rare foiling since it already came in super. Mana Dragon, a uh, Zernatron. This is something that really doesn't see too much play. So this is a bit more of a filler. We've got stuff like Crusadia Magius, again, instrumental for the uh, success of the Crusadia Thunder deck. Crusadia Equimax, more geared towards the pure Crusadia builds, but still nice nonetheless. Cyber Dragon Seeger for you Cyber Dragon players out there and then we have the uh, Sky Striker Ace Monsters. I think we have a uh, Hayate Shizuku and Kagari, although I think the other ones are a little bit later on. We have Danger Chupacabra going up to secret from Ultra, so that's pretty nice if you're wanting to foil out the dangers. Same thing for Jackalope. Jackalope was incredibly expensive as well, like being 20 bucks for an Ultra Rare, so that should bring the price down for that card, but also give you a higher rarity, so that's pretty nice. We've got Salamangrate Foxy in here, like the only common that's still left in the Salamangrate deck, so that's cool to see that's going to get a foil treatment. Thunder Dragon dark going up to secret thunder dragon hawk and roar all getting the secret rare treatment heat leo again this is a card that's been reprinted a couple times but now it's gonna have the original art with secret rare foiling so that's really cool galaxy eyes soul flare dragon doesn't really see tons of play but it's pretty cool for any uh you know casual player who might be interested in that danger mothman a very very underrated danger and probably like the fourth or fifth best so that's really nice that that's getting a higher treatment danger response team not really the most used card then we have a couple of the uh um excuse me, the uh, Noble Knight cards, which don't really see any play whatsoever. Morgan, Heritage of the Chalice, and Until Noble Arms are Needed once again. And then I think we just have the Sky Strikers finishing it up here, being Kagari, Shizuku, as well as Ray. So the thing is, when it comes to the uh, secret rares, I feel that the ultra rares actually had a much better job and a much higher density of good playables. Whereas the secret rares, there are some filler cards that we might see a lot of in terms of like the Noble Knight cards, you know, the Galaxy Eye Soul Flare, the Mana Dragons, and all those different things, which is a bit unfortunate because if we do get the ratios and those cards are printed more than all the other good secret rares that people actually want, yeah, that's going to be a bit unfortunate. However, I think overall the Megatons are probably one of the better products we've had of the entire year, probably one of the better products we've had of all time, just because going back to what I started the video out with, there's something for everyone in one of these tins, whether you're a casual player, a competitive player, or a collector, you're going to open one of these tins and most likely get something that you're going to be happy with. And I think that ultimately makes for a good product. Now, I'm still going to recommend you guys buy the single cards that you want because that's what I do for one. And for two, you're going to get what you want guaranteed instead of hoping you pull it in the instance of, say, like the promos, which are only a one in three chance of getting, or maybe any particular prismatic secret rare or ultra rare of a card that you might want. However, overall, when it comes to these tins, in terms of randomized product, this is probably one of the better randomized products we've ever had in this game's history. So I really hope Konani continues used to do this moving forward. I wish they would just not put cards in here that are just going to be filler, especially at the prismatic secret level, just to give these uh, these tins an even more wider appeal and give players more of what they want. Good cards, solid reprints, and nice high rarity collectible value. But guys, those are just my thoughts. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about these mega tins overall. I'd really love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching the video. Be sure to like the video as always. Subscribe to the channel.
channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh content. And if you found this video helpful, consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member. Because just by showing your support in any way that you can, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.